Well, welcome everyone. Good to see you all again. Um, I'd like to uh, introduce to you Jim McAnally. He's with me here today, so you know who he is. Jim's the former senior vice president of the Liberal Party, and he's here. To, and I'm happy to announce that he's joined the uh, United Australia Party. And on my left-hand side, we've got Suz Uzi Douglas. Susie Douglas is the former senior vice president of the National Party. So I'm, I'm happy to welcome them into the United Australia Party. Um, for those of you who watched Late Line, Late Line last night, I, I did say that we'd be standing for 127 seats in the House of Representatives. Indeed, that was our plans. After my uh, appearance on Late Line last night, because of the volume of, of uh, inquiries we received even that late time at night, our executive met and it was decided that we would be standing in 150 seats in the House of Representatives. And at that time, I was endorsed to stand as the candidate for the United Australia Party for the seat of Fairfax on the Sunshine Coast. So I'm announcing that I'm doing that. So um, there seems to have been a lot of confusion this morning about what's actually happening. So I thought I should make it absolutely clear to you. The reason I'm standing for federal parliament is that I'm standing to be the next Prime Minister of Australia. That's why we've got the United Australia Party. We're not there to offer or to compete with the Qatar Party. We're there to change the government of this nation. And that's the reason we're standing. And that's why, over the coming weeks and the days ahead, you'll see major figures in Australian politics and in this nation's history, right across the country, in other states, in South Australia, Western Australia, Victoria, Tasmania and New South Wales, make a courageous stand to get government back for the people. As far as Julia Gillard goes and Tony Abbott, there really is no difference. They're all controlled by the same lobbyist consultancies who employ uh, a Liberal, a former ex-Liberal and a former ex-Labor, so it doesn't matter what happens, the people miss out. And when it goes to policy, of course, I've been a long-time supporter of the Liberal Party of Australia and I support many of the policies that they have. And I announced last night on Late Line the five differences in policy. I was also endorsed last night by the executive of the party to be its federal leader. So we look forward to the up and coming uh, debate. And of course, politics in this country should be a debate about ideas. You'll find today there have been a lot of misinformation out there in the market, which is a normal tactic, a tactic that I'm well aware of as a former a spokesman for the National Party of Australia, a former state director and a former life member of the LNP. When, when you can't win the political argument, you attack the man. At no time in any forum have I ever said that I'm providing $20 million for any political party of this country. The Australian should change its name to fabrication because that's all it's been writing lately. I had a call from an Australian reporter last night. He asked me questions. I, I had to unfortunately get ready for a, a, a late line I couldn't answer them. But at no time did I ever say that I'd be providing $20 million. What this election's about is not about money or not about individuals, although you can expect to see me attacked all the time because when they can't win the argument. You know, this is a, a, a debate about ideas, about the future for our nation, where we should go and what we should do, whether we should continue to have people occupying our highest office who have no experience in running large corporations or large businesses or large enterprises at all and whether we should be looking to say what we can do in this critical time. You've seen our Treasurer, Wayne Swan, tell us that we're going to have a balanced budget. We now know that the budget's going to be something like $60 billion in deficit. We've got a Treasurer who can't even count, or if he does count or he does estimate, he doesn't do it very well. So to be out by $60 billion is quite a lot, and this country deserves better. You know at the moment Australia is regarded as being very, very strong in the economy. Our, our dollar is the highest it's ever been, yet our people are suffering. Our economy domestically is destroyed. People like the Gold Coast in Australia, which was a booming area for the country, is now a backwater. In the shadow blocks of La Trobe in Victoria, people are losing their jobs. Families are being uh, dis disjointed and unemployment's going up to 25 per cent a year. And why? Because of the carbon tax. It's not good enough to say you're going to abolish the carbon tax. It's got to be done retrospectively. We've got to give hope to those families in Victoria that they can get their jobs. And for years, for the last 30 or 40 years, we've exported our resources in this country from Queensland and from Western Australia to our Asian partners in Japan. How can it be when Japanese wages are higher, when their energy costs are higher, when there's a transport that they can take the resource wealth of Australia and make money and become the third largest economy in their world? Don't Australians have the enterprise to do that? 
And so part of our policies is, of course, to change that wrong, to have the Commonwealth Government intervene and create the incentives that their governments have done for many times so we can take our, our, our wealth in Queensland and Western Australia and take it to our cities and the people that need it in New South Wales, Victoria, South Australia, Tasmania, and give their jobs to establish that our minerals should be processed into final products in this country so that we can export stuff not at $40 a tonne, but, but as I sell nickel at Yubulu now for up to $20,000 a tonne, and that those benefits can flow into extra revenue and extra te taxation and extra wealth for the nation and give us more schools, that we can get the, the Gonski report and all these things happening, that they don't become dreams and politicians' announcements, but they become reality. I'm not interested in being involved in dreams. I'm interested in, in making change in this country and providing employment and a real future and a real aspiration for our people. So I'm, that's why I'm standing, because I think I can offer better service to the community than anyone else. I have no personal interest. I've made enough money in my life. I'm not seeking any enrichment or wealth for myself. I'm seeking it for the Australian people. And my family has had a strong commitment to Australia for many years. My great uncle was killed in the first war as a member of the 40th Battalion from Tasmania, fighting for the land he believed in. My other uncle for, uncles fought in uh, Papua New Guinea and uh, on the Kokoda track and in, in intelligence. And my uh, nephews have fought in the Vietnam War. And my recent nephew, nephew group captain, Martin Brewster, served in Intervent in Tasmania and works for us in Townsville. He'll be a candidate in the next federal election. You'll know more about that later. But now's the time for Australia to claim back itself. And the United Australia Party, at times of national crisis in the 30s, Joe Lyons was there to bring together people from different parties. It doesn't make sense that if you believe in the Labor Party or you believe in the Liberal Party, you become a demon, that we had this adversary. Because we're all Australians. We need a party that will reunite all of us. I'm not going to regard anyone or detriment anyone for their political beliefs, and neither we should. We want to understand what the community needs and provide it. So perhaps I'll open for questions now. Well, because Palmer Coolum Resorts in Fairfax, and people have had a, a, a chance to see who I am. I've had a long commitment. I've had a house up there for over 20 years, um, and uh, we employ a large number of people on, on the Sunshine Coast, and it's a seat that I think I can make a contribution to. And, uh, you know, I, I'm not frightened to stand for the House of Representatives in an area where people know me, where they know my businesses, they know my family, and they have for 20 years. That's where I should be standing. If you are elected to the Parliament, what will you do with your business interests? Do you believe you'll have to keep them at arm's Look, uh, this shows you how much the poor media has been misled over the years. The Parliament was set up so that citizens of Australia could represent themselves, not that they would be there as permanent fixtures for 30 or 40 years like Julia Gillard and Tony Abbott, right? They were set up so citizens could serve this nation. There's no question of giving up who you are. If you're a farmer, you don't stop being a farmer when you go into Parliament. You are who you are. The question is that you do nothing wrong or within priority. The corporations law in this country that I've worked under for over 30 years requires that if there's a conflict of interest, a, di a director discloses it and he leaves the room. Uh, those standards don't apply to the lobbyists that run Australia. They don't apply to, to the cabinet of this nation, but they will if I'm prime minister. That's what will happen. You'll get a much higher corporate governance, much more accountability. I could go off and, and stay in Monaco, have a nice drink and forget about this country, but we're, we've got more commitment to Australia, to your children, than anyone else. We want to stay here because we know what needs to happen in this country. And I'm fed up with watching television and seeing Tony Abbott, who's no different than Julia Gillard. They're both of the same lot. And that's what you'll get. Don't look at po these policy debates. They're all rubbish. They won't be implemented by anybody. Uh, what will happen is a co foreign corporation will come over here or someone else and pay a million dollars to a lobbyist, and he'll say, you get me this outcome. And do you think that I would pay, as a business person, a million dollars to anyone and be happy if I didn't get that outcome? That's what runs this country. I know what it's all about, and I don't think it's right. I think we need to have a democracy. Well, I'm not standing for a pay packet, <laughs> and that's that's the whole point. It's it's not a question I would answer. I'm not, it's not a question I would answer because it's about money. This this is about ideas and what's best for the nation. What's your understanding? Well, well, first of all, that's a good question. So let me actually answer it for you, right? First of all, we hold the business name Uni Uniting Australia 
Party. We hold the business name for the United Australia Party. We hold the priority trademark for United Australia Party. And we hold the priority trademark for Uniting Australia Party, right? So this is uh, cooked up by the powers that be in the Liberal National Parties to have something to uh, hijack the media off the real issue. And that's what they've done. So, you know, this is just desire to cause confusion. This was the same tactic that Tony Abbott used when he was the attack dog and ingratiated himself to get rid of the Pauline Hanson party. They're trying to use the same tactics. These are the sort of things and discussions that we're taking behind closed doors. And, you know, if they think that that's going to have any effect on me, they've got another thing coming. You know? No. <laughs> any other questions? Not that I can see. I'm totally opposed to uh, free gun access. I'm totally opposed to having the right to shoot a, a snake in your backyard. I'm totally opposed to the idea that every Australian should have the right to have a dingo. So. You were with the idea late last year. No, I wasn't, never. Mr Catter requested a meeting with me and one of his relatives that know me uh, was, uh, was gracious enough to see him. There's no toying at all. And this is another, mis in, uh, another attempt by people to go off the rain issue. Okay, the main issue is what should be happening in this country. You know, w our policies, our policies are similar to the Liberal National Party, except on five areas. Right, the first area being that we have an absolute ban on having lobbyists standing for Parliament or being holding any um, party positions. Now, Tony Abbott, in contrast to that, as you all saw at the uh, National uh, Federal Council of the Liberal Party last year is much in favour of having lobbyists in party positions. So if you believe um, that the Liberal Party policies are right and you think we should have a lobbyist controlling our parties, vote for Mr Abbott. But if you think that, like we do, that you don't need lobbyists to do those sort of things, give us your vote. I mean, I've got Jim McNally here, former senior vice president of the Liberal Party, um, Susan o Douglas, Susie O'Douglas. <laughs> Susie Douglas, rather, uh, former senior vice president of the National Party. So these are not people that come out on a whim. They come out because of proprietary and good governance and the integrity of what this com country is about. How would you balance your interest I don't know. How do you balance your interest being a journalist? You know, it's got nothing to do with it. Absolutely nothing. Well, look, I've got, got nothing to do. It's, it's got nothing to do with it. That's because you, media, try to keep people with talent, ability and achievement out of our parliament. And that's what's wrong. We need more people. With... I'm, well, do I look to... You know, as far as I'm concerned, I'm full-time running for prime minister. That's it. That's my job. All right? Well, I, I, I don't know. I'll probably go and play bowls or something and have a good time. Spend more time with the family. I'll go surfing. What are you going to do on the weekend? You know? <laughs> Well, the Queensland, uh, the Queensland Act... Well, we'll just see what happens, you know. The, the, we do have a plan, but we don't want to tell the media all our plans in one day or you won't come to a press conference next week. But the public surely will deserve, deserve to know how... Well, they do, but... Well, 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 of course they do. And the Act sets out the time frames for them to know and the procedures. And I've already announced that we've started that in relation to the state area. And we'll be going through and we'll keep the public regularly informed. We have no crimes of getting 500 signatures. We've got no crimes of getting 50,000 signatures in this country, right? Where's the official law? Well, well we've, we've already... I know, you, I know this is supposed to be a news conference, but we announced it last night on Late Line, the party's been formed and it's underway. So is this a launch for This is not a launch. You don't have to have a launch. We've formed the party. The, uh, at uh, unitedaustralia.org. Uh, people can come on there from tomorrow and apply for membership of the party, and people are applying for membership right now. How seriously should, how seriously should people take you, given, I mean, there was talk a little while back about state politics? Well, uh, just to put it on the record, we'll be standing in all elections. Federal, state um, uh, elections will be standing, no doubt about that, you know, so there's nothing new about that at all. So you won't turn around tomorrow and change your mind? Well, I don't think so, no. Mm -hmm. Oh no, so we'll take the steps, yeah, we'll take the steps that are necessary to provide refunds to people in, say, New South Wales and Queensland and other places that have, pay, have had to pay higher electricity bills because of this. Now, when you deal with carbon, you have to understand that the ETS that operates in Europe, it sells carbon for $3 a, um, 
and we're selling it for $29 in our current situation, our carbon tax. What that means is that we've got something like 10 times the size of the tax for carbon on our industries. Whether you're in favour or against the carbon tax, as Australians, you don't want to see this, this country's industries disadvantaged, right? And that's what's happening at the present time. And it's happening right now. People are losing their jobs. Pensioners are paying higher electricity and they don't need to do it. So we'll write that wrong. Well, we haven't considered that. We may, we may re reinstall that as an incentive for industry. What we want to do is create stimulus. I said we haven't, we haven't decided that yet. But we've just decided that the basic principle, if the carbon tax is wrong, if it's not sound, not just for environmental reasons, but for reasons that, you know, if we look at Europe, they're paying 10 times less tax than we are and we're less competitive, we would abolish it. If it needs to be abolished, it should be abolished from when it was brought in. Tony Abbott only wants to abolish it after he's elected. So that's just uh, taking the easy way out. And, and it's not a question of, uh, you know, we've got to set the priorities for this country and what should happen. As I said last night, in Australia, uh, Aboriginal infant mortality is the highest in the world. You know, it's been that way for 100 years. And the governments of this country don't seem to care that Australian babies and unborn children are being sacrificed every day of the week. It doesn't become an urgent priority. The national uh, broadband is much more important. Having a good media advisor is much more important. If you had a government that cared about Australians, something would be done to save those children immediately. And if I'm Prime Minister, something will be done on our first day to stop that from happening in this country. It doesn't matter that, of course, they're Aboriginal people, for any people. Absolutely. I'll be out there. If they've already seen me. So, sorry? Absolutely. I've door knocked more doors than Tony Abbott and he knows it. You know, I used to work for the uh, National Party in 1974. I used to write speeches with the Premier then. And I was out door knocking. I got a black eye in uh, G-Bung because I arrived too early and a lot of you just spelled me up, you know. So I don't mind doing that. I'll be out door knocking because I'm interested. You know, what's important about politics is not what we say. It's listening to what other people's needs are and trying to meet them. Well, um, PPM's a lot, pretty good, I think, don't you? It, it sounds OK, but I'm not doing it to be Prime Minister. I'm doing it so that, that, that we can get some of these things done in a country that I love. All the people I mentioned earlier in my family have served this country much more than I ever could. And uh, we've seen that yesterday in Anzac Day. All of us should think that the idea of public service is a good thing. It doesn't matter whether you've got uh, no money or you've got a lot of money. It's the idea of, of each Australian contributing to the country that we all live in and we all love. That's what public service is about. Why ridicule someone like me or like our members because we want to uh, contribute to the, the debate, even if we're wrong? Why ridicule this? That's what we need more in a democracy. But all you'll find happening is that Tony Abbott, Kevin Rudd, right, and Julia Gillard, the three of them, the three monsters of Australian politics, will all start attacking me, not because of the policies I've put forward. Ask them, do they agree that we should do something about Aboriginal infant mortality? Ask them. Do they think it's OK that lobbyists should be uh, in paid political positions or other positions of political parties in this country? Ask them if they think it's OK that there's a little box on the floor of Parliament House for advisers so that Tony Abbott can rush over and say, what should I say next? Or Julia Gillard can do the same thing. Aren't you tired and sick of going to boring press conferences when things are scripted, people don't tell you what they're doing, and you say, why am I being a journalist? And you look around and you see there are less and less journalists because the stories get boring and boring every day? You know, why aren't they considering you poor journalists and being more exciting? Why don't, why don't they smile? Oh, I don't know. It's for MPs in state parliament to say. I expect right across this nation that there will be a tide of, uh, of uh, response to what we're doing to take up the challenge, to make this country all it could be and for people to become all they could become. Because we've got a responsibility to all the people that have gone before us to ensure Australia is a stronger and a better, better country. Sorry? Yeah, sure, you can ask Jim. Yes. Why are you back in Clive? Uh, Clive has got a vision for Australia that I think we all should have. Uh, Australia was called a lucky country many years ago, and unfortunately Australia is not that lucky country anymore. It needs to be brought back. We need to take politics out of the equation and start building the country for the betterment of our children 
and their children to come. The reason I'm standing with Clive Palmer is I've known Clive since he was 19 years old. He's an inspiration for every single person in this nation. Anyone that can bring himself from absolutely nothing in a lifetime in this country is the perfect example for every other kid in this Australia to look at. That's the reason I'm standing with Clive Palmer. And where will you stand? Oh, well, 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 let me, he, he, he's standing with us, philosophically. He hasn't, we're not announcing any seats today, only Fairfax. So I'll invite you, Susie. Um, thank you for the question. Um, I'm really, really happy to be supporting Clive Palmer. I've known Clive for a long time, my history with the National Party, but also just the fact that I'm a Gold Coast girl and, and Clive's a Gold Coast boy and he has contributed so much to the city, to the state and to the country. And I trust him. And he's got loyal friends around him. And those loyal friends have been with, with him for many, many years. And for somebody to have so many loyal friends like Clive is testament to his character. So I'm supporting him, but I'm supporting his vision. And I'm hoping that we can all go forward with it. Thank you. Uh, look, it's definitely not a stunt. Uh, it uh, has been in the making for a long time, and uh, it's it's coming at a good time now. And I think Clive has uh, been giving you all a lot of warning about what's been happening. So it's definitely not a stunt. No, we, we can't. You can't ask any of those questions because you can't. You can't ask a. No, I'm sorry. I'll have to. I'll have to say you can't ask a woman what her husband's going to do. You can, you, you, no, no, you can't do that. He, it's my press conference, so and you'll be invited to come. So if you, want, if you want to ask a husband what he's doing, give him a ring. Get on his back. You know, don't ask a woman to go out and uh, 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 interfere with a family operation, really. That's, that's a little bit too much, even for journalists, right? I'm tipping into it my whole life, you know? The time I've got available, that's what really is valuable. Money is not what this is about. It's about ideas. And the, the, the more you journalists... Can, can live up to the right to know that you're all learnt when you've had your first year in journalism and ask people about the ideas we've spoken about, the quality of the journalism will increase, people will buy more papers, you'll have more subscribers, and we'll have more and more journalists, you'll have a good, a good profession. But when you talk about money and things that are not relevant, you're going to say, what's relevant to the average Australian? What are they missing out on? What's relevant to them is that they have a better life, that their family has a higher standard of living. And that's what the government's let them down on. As I said, the Australian dollar is about $1.03. It was $0.65. Cents. But are things better out there? They're not. If you believe that you're better off now, that, you, that uh, you're satisfied with what's being done for you and your family, you should vote again for Tony Abbott and Julia Gillard. But if you believe you can do something better, that we can put this nation in a better position, you should give the United Australia Party your vote and it'll be up there on the website at unitedaustralia.org tomorrow and join us and uh, we'll see if we can get a better country. Mr Palmer, the reality of politics, it is an expensive thing to advertise, to get out there campaigning, to get... So are you willing to put your money on the line or well, leave other well, I'd have to. Well, I'd have to first of all um, look at your premise, right? If we look around the room here, you'll see there's a lot of television cameras, there's a lot of journalists here, and it didn't cost me anything for this press conference really because I already had the room. So it didn't cost a lot of money. Why are you here? Because of the ideas that we offer for the country are superior to what anyone else can. Thanks very much. We've got to go. That's OK. See you later.